Hi all, we're going to look at another spectral analysis problem here. This one's a little bit different looking and provides a little bit different information than we were given in the previous problem we looked at. So as I mentioned before, the first thing we'll always want to do is look at a formula. In this case, the problem directly gave us a formula here, C7H8O. We need to figure out how many degrees of unsaturation that contains so we know what to start looking for in our um, molecular structure. So if we remember the degrees of unsaturation rules, we're going to leave out the oxygen here. And so we'll say this essentially can be thought of as C7H8 for the purposes of our comparison. If it were fully saturated, we'd have 2n times the number of carbon, plus 2, so 16 hydrogens. That means we've lost 8 hydrogens here, or 4 degrees of unsaturation. It has worked out very well for me in the past to suggest that 4 degrees of unsaturation usually is an aromatic ring. That's 1 degree for the ring itself, and then 1 more degree each for the 3 double bonds that are shown, so 4 total. So we'll start there. That takes care of six of our carbons. We know we have one more carbon someplace, so I might as well draw that carbon coming off the ring. And I have an oxygen to deal with. So we'll look at the IR spectrum. Probably, uh, since we don't have any additional degrees of unsaturation, if our aromatic ring is correct, we can't have an aldehyde or a ketone. So we're looking at either an alcohol or an ether. So the two structures that really kind of work here are uh, the carbon that I've drawn with the alcohol coming off of it, or an oxygen coming off of the ring with the carbon connected to that, the ether structure. So when we look at the IR spectrum, we see quite clearly that nice big broad peak around 3500, that's going to tell us we have an alcohol. So now our question is, do we have the alcohol coming off the same position of the ring like this? Or do we have something where we have a methyl group coming off the ring and the alcohol coming off some other place? And so we have to decide between those two. Before we get into that, we can look at some additional information here. When we look at the proton NMR at the very bottom of the screen, we see this note that one of the protons exchanges with D2O. This is a classic example of an OH group. So whether we're talking about an alcohol or a carboxylic acid that contains an OH, those protons can exchange with deuterated solvent. And so that's sort of our clue here that we do in fact have an OH. If we look at the rest of the NMR information, we can start to see uh, some new things. So in our proton decoupled carbon NMR, we're seeing that we have one, two, three, four, five different types of carbons. And they've given us the nice expansion here so we can see what's really happening in that low 120s range. So we have five different peaks. That's fine. Uh, but above that, the DEPT, which is described in our book, that spectrum is a different way of collecting data that can tell us whether a carbon is participating in a CH, a CH2, or a CH3 kind of environment. And as the key here tells us, CH and CH3 carbons both have positive peaks. CH2 carbons have negative peaks. And so if we look carefully, we have one CH2 here in our molecule. And that's kind of the dead giveaway between uh, are two different possible structures. We could really stop here. That shows us that we do have a CH2, and so our left structure is more than likely correct. Our other ones over here, we know our CHs from the ring, but what we'll see is that there's one missing. This guy didn't show up anywhere. It's not positive, it's not negative, that means it's neither of a CH, CH2, or CH3. That's a carbon without any hydrogens. 
And in fact, that one is our bridge carbon, our single branch carbon. If we go on and look at what's happening further in our spectrum, we sort of try to prove to ourselves what's going on. We have our single CH2 carbon. If I draw our molecule bigger, which we're now thinking is here, a molecule called benzyl alcohol. We have our OH proton that we've already seen. We see our CH2 carbon showing up there and the protons from it showing up here. And then we see on our proton and MR this mess that's occurring up in the seven and a half kind of a range. When we look at the expansion for that, we see a whole bunch of overlapping things. That's all the rest of the protons on the ring. So if I had drawn those out, remember we would have one proton on each of these carbons. They'd all be very similar to each other. If the OH was connected directly to the ring, we would see a little bit more separation, where the hydrogens closer to the OH would be shifted more than the hydrogens further from the OH. But having that CH2 group in between sort of buffers the effect, and so we don't see very much separation. We see a lot of overlap, and this sort of expansion mess is just our aromatic ring. The same thing is true when we go and look at the proton, or sorry, carbon NMR, we see that the one that had been missing for us, that I marked in green, shown up at about 140, that one would be our bridge carbon right here, so delta of about 140. And then we see three more distinct peaks. If we focus in on the expansion, I'll label them here A, B, and C. And again, now the ones that are closest to the uh, alcohol group, that electronegative group, will be the furthest shifted. And so we'd have these would be our carbon C as labeled. These would be B. And this one over here would be A. And so the overall message here is that we had benzyl alcohol, aromatic ring with a CH2OH, and that's our answer. It fits the IR data for the alcohol group. It fits the NMR data for both carbon and proton. I didn't need to use the information, but the UV spec information tells me that I do have some conjugation. That conjugation is in the 250 range. That corresponds to an aromatic ring as well. And the mass spec, although we didn't need to use it in this case, the mass spec does support this. We see our decrease from a molecular ion peak of 108 down to about 90. That's our dehydration, so characteristic of an alcohol. I also then see a decrease from 90 down to, uh, or 91 down to 79. And that's most likely the loss of that remaining CH2 group or so. Remember, these numbers don't have to necessarily correspond to the individual number down to the point, but we can see that pattern. And then other than that, we just see this sort of regularly repeating kind of a difference here. And that's going to be losing, uh, you know, one carbon at a time, sort of fracturing that ring. So this is an example where we pretty quickly came to the idea of benzyl alcohol, and it fits all of our data, so we can be confident that it's correct.